So with my screen shared here, I got my comments open. So uh, if you guys want to say good morning, good morning to all of you. You got the comments there. Go ahead and uh, and greet me. I'd appreciate it. And also, if there's anything that specifically that you want me to talk about, any sort of companies that are out there, um, if they're ones that I follow, I can speak uh, more specifically about those. If they're ones that I don't follow, um, then I can at least take a quick look and tell you what I see based on the charts that uh, that are there and presented to me and some of the other numbers that we can look at. It really depends on uh, where we find ourselves. Um, so let me come over here to Weeble and I'm actually going to go over here and, uh, this is the big thing today. We have the Ethereum, uh, London upgrade EIP 1559. And if I zoom in here, you can see it happens exactly at block 12,965,000. And, uh, this timer that you're looking at right now is on etherscan.io and, uh, it gives us that countdown. So we are under the 24 hour mark. Uh, for that Ethereum uh, up, hard fork to come up. And uh, so we see what block we're counting down towards. We see what block we're at. And you can see that we're a little over 6,000 shy uh, of making it to that uh, that uh, final release for EIP uh, uh, 1559. So uh, it should be pretty exciting. Uh, let me see. Here we'll, there we go. We'll put a notification on. Uh, and you, you can also add it to your calendar. So Google Calendar, Apple Calendar. I have both of them, so either way. Um, but yeah, pretty cool to watch that take place. And I think that what really when people start to feel the impact of that ETH that's being burned um, uh, for the the base fees that we have and bringing more predictability to those uh, to those base fees. And and also, uh, I was reading about why they're burning off the base fees. And I, I, I didn't think about this before, but it makes a lot of sense. So uh, having those base fees getting burned uh, rather than going to the miners um, really takes away from the idea that there might be some sort of manipulation where they would uh, cause excess congestion in the Ethereum network in order for there to be um, higher gas fees in the first place. So by having that base fee in place and burning it off and going to nobody, then nobody stands to benefit from um, higher congestion. So just another way to think about it. Um, there's also tipping that would go to the miners. Uh, so if you want your transactions to go through faster, you can tip the miners and make a higher probability that you get selected faster uh, for for reaching consensus for that confirmation um, for your transactions. So that's just something that you can think of there. Um, and I think that it also institutes a refund. So you can put a limit to how much uh, way you're willing to spend on the transaction. And so it'd be your, your base fee plus whatever tip and then um, subtract that away from whatever your gas limit is, and that would be the refund that would come back to you rather than just um, kind of putting a, a lot out there right now and uh, just hoping that the transaction goes through. And if it does go through, any extra just stays with the miner. Um, that's a, that's another change that we have with the uh, the hard fork for Ethereum. All right, let's jump over to, uh, let me see. Good morning, Bill. Uh, last day, yeah, this is the last day for Ethereum prior to that upgrade, Faiz. So, um, after this, uh, after this hard fork, uh, the blockchain as it currently exists switches over to a new fork, a new path, and then uh, we no longer have um, the Ethereum that we know right now. That we start moving uh, towards a, a more efficient system with uh, um, possibly somewhat lower gas fees as a side effect. That's not the intent of this. They don't expect the gas fees are going to be um, altogether lower because of it. Uh, proof of stake and sharding are things that are going to be things that uh, limit the congestion that we have coming through, especially the sharding part of it. And when that comes around, whether that's in 2020, uh, early 2022, uh, should see proof of stake come around and then sharding, I think, is after that. And we'll have to check the timeline for updates um, when that comes out. But when that does come out, that should be something that really helps out uh, with those gas fees and really brings uh, a lot more scalability and efficiency to uh, the Ethereum blockchain. ADP report, not good. All right. Yeah, we'll check that out. So let's jump over to some of the stocks. We'll come back to crypto um, after the market opens here. So we have the market open in just under nine minutes. There we go. So let me see. So, Bill, did you mean um, ADP, the company, or ADP as in a report? 
Let me take a look here. It helps if I actually type in the right acronym here. There we go. Morning, Simon. All right, so the employment report, national employment report, 333,000 change in non-farm private sector employment. All right, so yeah, let's uh, let's bring that up, see what we got. There we are. All right, we can look more at this uh, after the market opens as well. There we go. Private sector employment increased by 330,000 from June to July on a seasonally adjusted basis. Okay. There we go. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, I apologize. I was thinking stocks and I wasn't thinking reports. Um, so yeah, this really, thank you for the clarification. So private sector employment increased. Okay. U.S. non-farm private employment, small size. All right. All right, yeah, I'm going to have to pick through this and see the, uh, the different information that we have here. Uh, there we go. Here's a chart. Change in total non-farm private employment. Wow, significantly dropped off from May to June to July. Historical trend and change in non-farm private employment. It looks like we are uh, ticking back upwards, at least according to that chart. Maybe not what we expected, though. So we'll let me see. So this is in thousands, construction, natural resource, mining, manufacturing. Leisure and hospitality was expected to, uh, uh, to do well. And uh, so at leading here uh, is not too surprising. Information down a little bit. All right. I have a uh, a cat digging at my wires again. <laughs> at least he's not chewing on them. That really help. Yeah, let's uh, let's come back to this after the market opens and we'll see if there's anything we can get through. Really picking through the reports during a live stream, um, unless there's something specific that I'm looking for, it doesn't really uh, help us out too much. Although this is something uh, I saw a change in the uh, futures that we had. This could be one of those things that could affect the uh, um, where the futures are sitting. There you go. Stock futures slide, bonds rally on week, jobs data. Yeah. Um, and that would be, that actually would be around the time that futures change tune would be around the time that that uh, news came out about the report release. There we go. So um, I'll keep that open. We'll come back to that. Uh, let's go back over here to uh, what we have in the markets. And uh, in the pre market, anyhow, we have, uh, I think this is Meta Wound. Just based off some of these stocks that we have, let's go to the daily chart. This isn't one that I that I follow, so I don't know its price action. So it's doing all right in the pre-market. It looks like a lot of sell-off recently. And I know that this is one that somebody asked me to look about. Is an Israel-based, okay. So it's healthcare and pharmaceuticals, product and field, severe burns, chronic, okay. Connective tissue and what other indications. Hmm, interesting. And is it moving on any sort of news that it's up like it is? Not really seeing anything too much other than what they have for that upcoming conference call. Okay, uh, let's pick through some of the other ones. Actually, let me go, not there, let's go here. All right, wow, uh, Beyond Spring. This is one uh, that was uh, topping the volume charts and uh, and I can see why it was. It's up uh, triple its price because it's up uh, over 200%. So let's check out uh, BYSI and see what's going on there. All right, so Beyond Spring, uh, stock more than triples after lung cancer treatment meets endpoints in phase three trial. Excellent. All right. Beyond Spring up 300%. What more what you should know? Quadruples. 
positive planabulin combo data and lung cancer. Perfect. So for anybody who is in this, uh, that would be absolutely incredible. We're going to have to go down to the intraday before we can really see where that's at. And I'll zoom in so we can see that sort of spike. So this is one, it, typically when something triples like this, um, I'm looking at the level two that we have over here. This is probably going to still be highly active uh, when the market opens. Um, so this thing peaked out at $46.60 um, and currently sitting at $29. And it was at $9 before. Wow. So at one point, this thing went up over 4X and we have really nice volume spikes over... Uh, I mean, when you look at the volume that I had previously, it's in um, the low thousands into maybe a couple of tens of thousands um, for volume. And then almost a million, over a million, 880,000, almost 800,000 there. Um, so a lot of sell side pressure. This thing's probably going to take a big dip right off the beginning um, before it kind of settles and see where that price happens. Uh, jumping in now would be such a big gamble and such a big question mark for anybody taking a long uh, a long position without knowing the fundamental value of the company. Um, it would just be crazy. And when you take a look at the analyst estimates, uh, twenty five to thirty nine dollars based on six analyst estimates. And right now in the pre market, we're sitting up above that low estimate where they expected the price to be in twelve months time. Something is something to kind of gauge where that's at. Um, so really, if there was any play here at all. Um, at least as far as long term goes, short term it would be um, short term it would be anybody's uh, game on this, depending on how you play it and when you when you enter it and everything. Um, but long term, um, you really need to know uh, what you expect from the company and uh, to find your buying prices or your buying points. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, EXPI is up significantly. Let's check that one. That's a good one. There we go. All right. Yeah, skills is the big one. And I've actually mentioned uh, what we saw in their um, in the reports. What we got? We got 30 seconds to market opens. Um, so for skills, uh, I'll talk about those in just a moment as well. Uh, I do want to see what's going on here, and then I'll, I'll move over to skills and uh, and what happened with the earnings report and um, uh, how it's how it goes with a company that's like skills. So uh, earnings schedule, earnings flash, revenue. Wow. Okay. So we had a significant beat on earnings for EXPI. Wonderful. All right. So in the pre-market up 20% on that one. And this is another one, um, 53 to $62 based on four analyst estimates. And right now it's up over $40 in the pre-market. And now the market just opened. So now it's up over $40 during the regular market hours. And we'll see how that uh, pans out for us over time. Let me uh, switch over to this one so we can see how our stocks are performing. Um, Ethereum says that it's up 5% for the day. So we'll also check in with that one. That means that uh, ETH -E and uh, some of our other um, crypto-based stocks might also be up in the meantime. Um, SoFi, uh, there's some people who are really bullish on SoFi. Um, the more I read about them, the more I like them. I don't know that I, I, I do have a small position with them, um, but I'm still uh, deciding whether or not I want to make that a larger position. Um, and so their their earnings are actually something that are highly anticipated. I believe they're August the 12th, maybe Thursday of next week, um, where we see those come out um, and uh, hoping to see some really good numbers coming out of SoFi. Uh, all right. This EXPI, I want to see where this price well is right around 4290. Um, it looks like we have a, a large number of orders and we have a lot of sell side pressure, but being up 20% in the pre-market, if this thing settles a little bit, um, you know, it wouldn't be uh, surprising. Now it's just up over 22% during these uh, the market open here. All right. Yeah, cool. All right. So we'll see. Uh, actually, let's go to the daily chart. One last thing. And I promise this time, one last thing before we get to skills. Um, I just wanted to see where that puts us. We actually... Well, if we can close uh, close the day up here, then I mean, we were already up over resistance at about that $42 mark. And then let me see, where else do we have? We actually have a fair amount to run for EXPI where there's really not a, a clear line of resistance that I can see, at least looking at the daily chart here. Um, 
where this thing can top out. We're pushing up almost to $44. Uh, 43.80 is the high price so far. Our, our most recent previous high that we have here would be on June 9th at 41.89, and we're significantly over that. But we'll see if this is a, a minor peekaboo that we get, um, or if it's one that's going to continue to be strong throughout the trading day. All right, skills. So skills came out with their earnings report, and um, they're right now they have this gap down because their monthly active users, uh, for the first time I believe in their history, their monthly active users. Um, has trended downwards while their spending uh, had more than doubled uh, for Q2. And, and they're spending talking about their advertising revenue that they um, just haven't produced the results to get those monthly active users in. And this is something that is concerning, um, you know, and it's, it begs the question, well, why hasn't that taken place? And one thing about the nature of, uh, of when you talk about gaming platforms with skills, uh, well, any gaming platform, but skills being one of them, is um, those viral games. So the ones that that uh, that really take off, um, and then also the staying power for those games that they have, and also the competition that comes into it. Um, there's no uh, there's no whole recipe or secret sauce when it comes to a viral game um, where companies can just put pump out one after the other after the other. Um, so really, some of their success is dependent upon being able to uh, to find that that uh, that niche for the game that that ends up taking off and being wildly successful and wildly popular and um you know to see the results coming out of the revenue um i'm sorry of, of their of the revenue to see the results coming out of their spending on advertisement um really i mean people just need to catch on to the the games that are being played uh, i honestly don't know that uh that a cash payout itself is enough of an incentive uh, I mean, while it's there and it's good, we really want to we want to see those games put out that are really catching on like wildfire. And those are going to be major catalysts for um, for skills because it should pump up the monthly active users that they have. Um, so really, we want to see the results of their advertising. And right now we're not getting them. And so our price is trending downward. So the increased spending, you would hope to see that there's also increase in monthly active users. Um, and right now, that's just not there. So um, let me see if I can bring that up for you on. Uh, so skills does it have uh, does it have potential to it? Um, yes, skills has potential. Yes, it's high risk because it is a company that's pre profit, so it'd be a growth company. Um, it's been beaten down from its highs, like a lot of the growth stocks that we saw. Um, and like I said, with this most recent earnings report, the biggest uh, thing that we have going on, there we go. So the revenue went up. I shouldn't, I shouldn't fail to say this. The revenue did go up by 52%. Um, but the monthly active users going down would be uh, a headwind because it shows, um, uh, it brings in the idea that their, their growth for their user base is something that slowed down. Um, and that's something that would be concerning. So we'll have to watch for that. So skills has fallen 2.7%. Let me see. There you go. Uh, swelled even as revenues grew more than 50%. So the revenue is strong, and that's a good thing. Um, where's the monthly active users one? Yeah, all right. Did they not mention it in this one? This might just be a, a summary of the earnings, but not really mentioning much uh, much else. Bro gross marketplace volume grew 47%. So they have growth numbers, but the big key metric that we have would be the adoption um, or their ability to bring in uh, more at monthly active users. And the fact that that shrunk a little bit uh, in Q2 from Q1 is the concerning part. Um, this is something that we have yet to see uh, pan out is that uh, acquisition from Arky. So they may have closed the acquisition. However, we need to see the results um, that come out from acquiring Arky. And uh, so hopefully, hopefully that's something that uh, that really uh, helps them perform better uh, throughout the third quarter of this year. All right, I better move on to some of the other stocks. Let me see what else we got here. Yeah, uh, that uh, that report. What was it? Three hundred thirty thousand bill, and we we ended up at, uh, our, and we expected seven hundred. So we're less than less than half of where we were expected to be at job wise. All right. Yeah, Robinhood. Uh, Robinhood jumped incredibly from when I was live streaming yesterday. All right. 
one moment here. There we go. All right. So, wow. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, for Robin Hood, I was considering back in the, uh, when it was in the low 30s, uh, I was thinking about taking up a position. I wanted to see it play out for a little bit. And I'm not saying that I missed my opportunity, but that opportunity to buy a position into Robin Hood certainly, <laughs> certainly is not today. Let's look intraday so we can see a little bit more with the candles. Oh, uh, we got it. We got halted on a breaker. Wow. I can believe that. Let's uh let's see how the volumes played out just in its uh its time on the New York Stock Exchange. So just uh at the market open here, we have volume of about 20 million shares. And let's see, the day that I IPO'd, uh very first 30 minutes was uh 21 million. So we're still within that. We're, we're within the first eight minutes of market open. Um and shares are halted, and then 32 million, so 52 million over the first half, half uh, first hour that it traded on the New York Stock Exchange. There you go. So that's incredible. Uh, Ark Invest jumping on this one is something that helped. Uh, I saw a headline that was talking about uh, retail traders also being something that's pumping this, um, but I think that this is a little bit more than retail traders. And uh, do we get any analyst estimates covering any initiated coverage on this one yet? Probably. Probably a little bit too soon. Uh, U.S. stocks, Wall Street set to pull back after S&P hits record high. There we go. Record earnings. There you go. Attributed to be on Wall Street bets. That seems to happen a lot of times. Hey, let me see. Crypto, long-term benefits, sector, financial. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, up 40% for the day. That's incredible. Watching it go from like, I, see, I remember seeing it at $34 per share um, just a, a couple days ago. Was that yesterday even that we may have had it down to 34? Maybe it was the day before that we had it at 34 and now it's up uh, at $65. Uh, and we'll see this uh, open up. I don't know that opportunities are lost. I just think it's a little bit early and I'm a little bit in the dark uh, as far as taking a position on Robin Hood. Um, so if I had I've already been in it, Today would have been a great day. And honestly, I probably would have uh, taken some profit off of uh, a big move like this one uh, without knowing um, what their valuation is, whether or not this price is sustainable. And I'm just guessing that right off the bat, it's likely not sustainable. But like I said, I'm in the dark, so there's not much weight that goes behind those words. But a 40 percent a day when you go up 40 percent, typically will have some sort of pullback. And plus, we're only in the first 10 minutes of the market. Uh, that's going to be neat to watch that play out. Let me go down to the first uh, down five minute chart. So we get two candles instead of one. Okay, down to the one minute. We'll drill down even further. Just because I'm interested to see the uh, the price action. Let me see what else we have here. All right, Roblox and Coin, absolutely, Simon. I'll get to those in just a moment, and then and okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Taco. There's the one minute chart. Hey, we're trading again. Looks like we peaked at $72. And uh, wow, just incredible uh, to watch that take place. You can see that minute that we were halted. Um, absolutely no price action. Now that it was opened up again, now we're up into the 70s. Um, wow, lots of buy side pressure on $74 per share. Uh, sell side's finally coming in. I don't even know if I can get my cursor on that. I was 70. Oh my goodness. I can't even read it. It's jumping around my screen so fast. Um, look at all that that uh, that buy side that we have, that upward pressure that's being put on it there. Finally, uh, sellers are coming in, and we'll see if we get that double top resist playing out. Minute chart is just so quick that uh, that unless you're really ready for it, you don't know what to do. And wow, I could watch this all day. I absolutely love watching the fast moving stocks. I think a lot of people do. Um, they are up over $77 per share at the moment. And now I got the pinwheel of death on Weevil. <laughs> Likely due to my own RAM, not due to uh, Weevil's instability. So just, just to put that out there, when I live stream, it's a resource hog. And uh, sometimes it causes me these uh, these hang-up type issues. So there we go. We'll see if I can get out of that. And then uh, in the meantime, we'll come over here. Uh, and probably won't have anything on Robin Hood here yet. Hey, we have one. 
a buy rating uh, with a price target of $65, which apparently right now is a 15, almost 16% downside from its current price of $77 per share. Uh, this coming from a three and a half ant star analyst that calls it a buy at $65. And that was from a week ago. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to do my reading on this and find out what sort of price we should be expecting. Um, I don't know. I don't know that 77 is right. So we'll watch that. Uh, okay. It looks like we will finally, <laughs> finally stop locking up on me. So uh, what were some of the other ones here? Uh, Roblox and coin. There you go. So Roblox is sort of in that same niche that we have for skills. And so it's a matter of um, showing continuous growth and that uh, that sort of viral behavior that we have. Um, do they have what it takes to keep that magic happening? They are already a profitable company. So there's less risk in going with Roblox than there is in going with skills because of that whole profitability thing. Uh, one thing that makes people like skills more is that there's a larger upside should their business happen to pan out um, and fill up, uh, reach the potential that they're capable of um, as a matter. But at this point in time right now for skills, it is just potential, uh, whereas uh, Roblox has been putting in the numbers. And that's something to watch for them is to see that they continue uh, in order to make that growth uh, off their platform. Uh, the developers get paid in Robux, I believe it is, which are convertible to uh, to U.S. dollars. Um, so they get converted into real money. And then they can get paid for the popularity for the games that they play. So it incentivizes development on the Robux platform. Um, and uh, there are some hugely popular games that are on there that people play that uh, that kids especially spend a lot of money because they want the, the little uh, digital tokens of whatever kind of knickknack things they are uh, within those games. I know. Um, my one daughter just said that she finally hit the 180 day streak. She makes sure that she goes into the game every day so she can get her streak bonus. She finally, and she, I think she said she got like the golden egg or something like that. And at one year of a uh, of login streak, if she's able to go in every day for one year, then she gets the diamond egg. And she's so excited uh, for these things. I should ask her if those, um, if you can sell those to other players, because if you can uh, and, it, and you can get uh, Robux from doing it, um, I mean, that could just be, uh, that could also be something that would work out really well. So uh, we'll we'll watch that. Analyst estimates on Roblox. We have nine analysts covering it. Uh, $90 price target on this one. And we're currently sitting around $77. Uh, actually, $78.45 it's saying here. Uh, so running just a little bit rich uh, compared to what we have for the analyst estimates. Uh, but there is still is some upside to go. So we still have, um, let me see. So if it's at 78, we got to get up to 80. So that's 10. So like we have like a 15-ish percent upside to the average day in this estimate. So uh, let me see. Coin was another one. So coin uh, has done a little bit better since crypto has been doing a little bit better. Um, it still has uh, to face the competition from uh, from other exchanges that are out there for crypto. And uh, as Bitcoin does better and as Ethereum do better, because they're the main holdings uh, for the assets uh, under management for coin, uh, then coin should also do better as well. Um, and also the other, there's other cryptos that make up uh, some of their assets just between Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's something like 75 or 80% of their assets under management um, are those two. And then all other cryptos that are on their, that are, um, they're on their assets under management are the other like 20 to 25%. So um, they move it as well, but not necessarily as much. So we should see some of that price action in crypto translate into some of that price action like we have for Coinbase here. Um, this one was highly anticipated. The competition is definitely one thing. Uh, the other exchanges that happen to come out, um, they're things that are going to uh, um, worry some investors this way in the way of uh, mitigating some of the price action we see for, for huge excitement. We finally have a 50 day uh, moving average on this one. And right now we're hitting into it as resistance right around like $234, $235. The nice thing about the price action we see for Coinbase is that as crypto has been sort of uh, muted in its price action, um, Bitcoin bouncing like 30 to 40,000, Ethereum bouncing like 17 to 2400 or 17 to $2,600 um, per token. Um, we see that muted activity here as well. And things have sort of calmed down for Coinbase. And one of the big questions for Coinbase is still about those transaction fees. 
Um, and will there be a race to the bottom? And if there is sooner than later, that could really eat into the revenues uh, that you would see on Coinbase. And as I've also mentioned before, the, uh, the security and safety and ease that uh, people experience uh, when trading on Coinbase and keeping their currencies on coin rather than transferring to a digital wallet, those are just a, a lot of things that go into uh, to Coinbase's popularity. And we'll see um, how that goes. Well, liquidity is the other one. Um, I should also mention that um, that they're, when people go to make their, their purchase for their cryptos, that they can actually get those cryptos or when they go to sell their cryptos, they can actually sell them. Um, so addressing those issues, uh, liquidity issues, security issues, Coinbase, uh, Coinbase puts out some pretty serious competition. And uh, in my opinion, they're one of the leaders that we have for the publicly traded space. Um, so I am bullish on Coinbase and I do have a position in Coinbase. Analyst estimates, we're right around the low right now. Uh, the average analyst estimate at the 18 analyst is 377. And we could take a look to see where that's performing on tip ranks. Ooh, I clicked the wrong one. Not for the last time. All right. So 353.73, a 50% upside from its current price. Uh, 12 analyst estimates that they're reporting here. Nine buys, two holds, one sell. Six days ago, a price of 210 from Mizuho Securities. 10% uh, downside, they say. Um, and then if we look just within the last month, we got a sell, but no price. And then uh, buy ratings, 275, 444, 298, and 335. So right high 200s into the low 300s are currently what we have coming out. So uh, we'll have to watch that evolve over time and see if we uh, if we near this. And really, we want to keep our eyes on the crypto market to see uh, if we get bullish behavior returning from uh, to uh, to Bitcoin and Ethereum along the way. All right, let me see. So NSAV, I also said, let me see. We'll go there. All right, NSAV up 10%. This must be a tiny one. Do I see it's about almost 11 cents per share right now? Oh, there you go. Now that it's on the chart, we can see it a little bit more. So this was rocking for about a penny. And then it went up almost 15 times on August the 2nd and then settled a little bit. So uh, let me see, profile, technology. FinTech for us, net savings is a cryptocurrency blockchain digital asset technology company. Awesome. I don't know if we'll have any financial information. We have a little bit. There we go. Any news on it? Market calendars for August the 9th. So there must be something coming up on August the 9th for NSAV. Um, I'd be careful uh, with that because sometimes you get it priced in early. Um, you get these price pumps and then uh, around August the 8th, August the 9th, you get those sell-offs that uh, leave people holding the bag. Um, but yeah, that's incredible price action that we have so far. And it did open um, it did open above yesterday's previous close. And that's why it's reporting another 10% up today uh, from where it was currently. At. Actually, now we're, it looks like, pushing on to 11% up from where it closed yesterday. Um, so we'll see if we peak out here at, uh, at about that uh, 13 cents besides that little top that we have right there. We opened uh, this next day at 13 cents. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be neat to read more about and see if it's one of those uh, diamond in the rough kind of plays. Remember, with big uh, reward also comes that big risk. So um, if you're thinking about taking that sort of position and you're thinking only about the reward, think about uh, how the loss would make you, even if you don't believe it's going to be a loss, you still want to make sure that uh, you're not trading in ways that are going to cause you to lose sleep at night. Uh, let me see what else you got. Can you take a deeper look at C3AI, please? Why it's falling. We can take a look. Yeah. So, uh, Taco, about Robinhood and about taking a, a short position on it. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much it's. Uh, three AI is that just is that just AI is that the ticker for that one? Yeah, here it is. All right, I thought I had the ticker right. Um, 
So about taking a short position on Robinhood, it is cool to see the price action for it and it is uh, cool to watch it go up. I just don't know um, how much it's expected to be, how much it's expected to be worth. I don't know its valuation. Um, I don't know how Root State's running. I'm just guessing based off of where it IPO'd um, that it's run up significantly uh, that you know it could tumble back down from where it's at. But without more information, I can't, I don't know if it would be something I would short because I just don't know, I don't know uh, how it should be priced. All right, so uh, AI, we've seen this a lot uh, recently with this sort of sideways trade, a little bit of tapering down off the highs that we have here, the continuation of the downward trend uh, for the uh, for the growth stocks and uh, C3 AI seems to fall into that category. So it looks like support is just under $50 per share. So like 49 to $50. So we do have that low there of 4080. Um, so high 48s. Um, and then below 50 would be like our area of support that we're rocking at. Uh, we don't have the 200 day on this. We just have the 50 day. So it hasn't been out that long. Analyst estimates says it's running cheap on this one. Arlington Asset Investment Core report second quarter. All right. Well, let me see. So without knowing more about the company, I don't know why it's uh, it's trading the way that it is. But one thing I can say is that it is holding a, a line of support here. Um, we don't know if this is just going to be uh, consolidated price action for a while. And then uh, if somebody is trying to take a long term position on this one, why um, what's going to make it inflect upwards? What's going to uh, to reverse the trend that it's currently at? It is trading below the 50 day and it's gapped down below the 50 day and it's negatively sloped. So we are um, in bearish territory on this one, but we are establishing a base of support, which um, looks like back here we were around like just under $60 and then mid to high 50s. And now it's uh, just at 50 or just below 50 that we're looking at for support. So the support keeps on dropping on us just a little bit more. So are we going to see this next little downward trend that's going to put in just a, a slightly lower low or is it going to be support that holds? Um, that's a story that we're going to have to watch play out over time. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Continue to slide. Big investors or large blocks of shares. Um, outstanding uh, fiscal results clear the runway to $100 for C3 AI. So investor place looks like they put out a bullish case uh, for that. Guru focus. There you go. CEI sold. Uh, insider selling. Um, actually, this one right here that's on 716. Let's um, let's go back and see where that puts us on the chart. All right. So 716 would be right here. And insider selling, like from the CEO, um, is he just uh, taking a little bit of, uh, of profit for himself, something that he's entitled to with the shares that he has in the company? Typically, when you have insider selling like that, it's not a good sign. Uh, or I'm sorry, let me let me rephrase that. It can be a bad sign for the company with insider selling because it would show that they don't have faith in their own company. That's a possibility, but it's not it's not a fact. So um, sometimes you have insider selling and it's not much. And really, you want to look at how much they're selling, um, who is selling. So the CEO uh, himself or herself being the one selling their position in the company, um, when they significantly reduce their position, um, that can be something that could be alarming for the price action that we see. And that could be uh, a little bit foreshadowing of what's to come for the company. So that could be something that's also helping to depress the, the, the price that we see um, for C3 AI moving forward. So um, I would keep an eye on that and, uh, you know, read a little bit more about who's selling. Um, and also just see, you know, what, what sort of tailwinds do they have? What are the things that's going to propel them or what catalysts do they have coming up in the future um, that we should be excited about that's really going to affect them as a business? Uh, let me see what else we have here. Trying to stock up. We'll check out some of the uh, the Chinese companies like the we have the EVs. We'll look into Baba because I know that one's been under $200 recently. Um, uh, let me see, EXP, yeah, same. GM report at 10 a.m. All right. Speaking of 10 a.m., I do have to make sure that, I, that I'm that uh, i wrapped up here right about 10 a.m. So I know that's not too far off. Um, so I'll try and uh, get to your stocks. 
Um, there we go. Let's check out Fisker, see what's going on for them. So Fisker currently sitting uh, as close to recent support uh, as they can get. Um, I had this line drawn here so showing that we had the lowest trending upward. Um, and then we did break below that. And then we had the 200 day that we were sort of sitting near sort of as support. And then we had a decent drop even below there uh, where we lost that support. And now we're just hanging on by how much though. So if we break support at the mid 14s, then we could tumble quite a bit. Mid 13s, maybe. 12 and then uh, max selling pressure at, at peak sell off. This thing uh, went below $10 per share before rallying up to $20 per share. So we had a, a 2x at that time. And then we had sort of a rest, not quite a consolidation. Let's see what happened uh, yesterday. If anything, to tell us more about that fix here and Bridgestone Unite uh, Sustainability Ambitions with Partnership on Groundbreaking. Okay. Electric vehicle startup stock start to putter while Tesla outperforms. So um, it could be uh, if Tesla is doing well, uh, that this would act inversely to what Tesla does. It seems like that might be the uh, sort of picture that's being painted. Key factor shaping the fate of Fisker's uh, Q2 earnings. All right. Also coming out of Zach's, maybe check that one out and see if they have any details that would be enlightening there. Um, Fisker needs to hit production in the United States. Um, the Ocean, I believe, is their uh, SUV. And... You know, I think that they that they have a decent chance. They definitely have a lot of competition that they're facing. Uh, the low price for the model um, and also with a quality vehicle are things that could be very good for them moving forward. Um, we just need to see that how they fare against the competition when they start production on the ocean, which I believe is either late, late 21 or early 22. Maybe people who follow this more closely would know that um, a little better than I would. Um, I, I don't know that it's I don't know if it's too far off, maybe late 2022 uh, in the comments. Maybe you guys have a little bit more knowledge on that one. There you go. Wow, GM, almost an 8% drop. They're sitting down at support too. So right at like $53, which actually is a fairly strong area of support all the way back to, where's this? This is like mid-March. About $54 down to like $53. So $53 to $54. Um, we're trading below the 50 day. The 50 day has gone flat recently. 200 day is still uh, positively sloped. So we could find support for this around $52 per share if it breaks support at $53 per share. Um, so really seeing what's leading that sell off if it is the earnings. Let me see. Uh, Dow falls more than 100 points. Uh, GM earnings disappoint. There you go. And let me see what else they have. Watch CNBC's full interview with General Motors CEO on Q2 earnings. Uh, and then U.S. stocks, Wall Street falls as economic woes hit banks, industrial stocks. Okay. Yeah, so for GM, if it's one that uh, that you're bullish on, then it, it looks like, and I, this is not financial advice because I'm not licensed to give it. So this is my own opinion. If I was going to take a long-term position on GM, I would look for a uh, buying opportunity where we were near support or at support. And um, that's currently where we're at. So if I was looking for uh, a good time to start and then uh, carry on some dollar cost averaging, those low 50s uh, looks like where we could find that happening. Um, I would look to the guidance that they give for Q3 or throughout the rest of 2021 uh, to be more telling on, uh, on what we think that price action is going to do in the future. So we can look uh, to the past and see how they're on that roadmap. Um, through 2021, uh, where they have placed themselves. Our chip shortage is one of the things that are really super affecting them because that's a really big possibility. Um, does that affect their outlook for 2021? Um, does that weigh into the next 12 months for them as well? Or do they expect to be able to rotate out of it strongly? Um, those are all questions that we would look to to find out um, if this is really just uh, one of those panics that we have. Um, or if this is just correcting based off of the little bit, a little tiny bit of run-up that we've had leading up to their earnings, um, bring us back down to that support level. Um, so just uh, just some considerations to put out there. We'll take a quick look at the analyst estimates. We have everything from $27 per share up to $90 per share based on 23 analyst estimates. There we go. And this was GM. So for GM, 30% upside, 
and it looks like the page is there you go within the last month so 74 79 67 85 77 and 90 um so since earnings um have just come out watching for how the estimates uh, the price targets change or how quickly they adjust uh to give us uh, a new price target over the next 12 months um would help paint that picture of, of what what to expect to see um if we had downgrades or upgrades or if we have reiterations uh, from these ones that happened within the last month, 20 days ago to 30 days ago. All right. Yeah, so it looks like significant upside as long as the earnings and the guidance, if we got any guidance coming out, didn't really change the story for them. Um, if that story remains unchanged, then the, the price targets that we have could still be uh, reasonable price targets. If that story has changed significantly, um, that can impact what the analysts expect the price to do over the next 12 months. All right, quick check in with crypto. And then uh, I apologize for uh, having to go. Like I said, I was aimed to end at 10. It's 10.03. And this time I just have some commitments that I have to that I have to get to. So I have to wrap things up. Bitcoin has fallen below 40,000 while Ethereum is back up over 2,600. So the prices aren't necessarily completely tied together. They are related to each other. There's some correlation. Um, I don't remember if it was like 0.8 or 0.7 for uh, the correlation coefficient between the price action between uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, but it is pretty strong. Um, a lot of crypto should be influenced in some way by, by Bitcoin because it is the leader. Um, and so what it does sort of gives us a little bit of inside information on the overall um, health according to price action for the crypto markets. Not complete indication, but a little bit of indication. So I mentioned Bitcoin resting after this run up, double top resist around uh, 42 ish thousand, a little over 42,000, 38,000 is a nice line of support for us. And right now we're sitting just under 39,000. Um, so we'll see if this is a time when it starts, uh, starts to turn around. We lost some of our volume and we lost some of our price action and drop back down a little bit. Um, as long as this doesn't dip too much, like if this goes down below like 35,000, um, then we're due to keep on dropping a little bit more. And, you know, we're just going to continue either trading sideways or maybe even just a, a little bit more of those tops uh, depressing or declining for us that we haven't really hit that moment where we're going to turn things around. If we stay well above 35,000, that can be good confirmation for us um, that we've hit a new, a new, uh, a new pattern, maybe back into more of a bullish trend. It is nice that this peak here, is way up above that peak that we had over there. So putting in that new recent high that we have, um, we want this low to stay higher than the previous lows that we had. Um, and we want definitely uh, less than a 50% retracement where we don't want to wipe out all of these gains that we had before. We wanna see it bounce above 35 in order to have a good shot at breaking this previous high that we have above 42,000. All right, let's uh, go to my friend Ethereum. Like I said uh, in my title that Ethereum has less than a day um, and then Ethereum as we know it is gone and then EIP 1559 takes over uh, and with that comes the base fee, the base fee burn and I, I think that we see already some priced in for 1559 but I think as people experience what it's like to really have um, money just go up in smoke for Ethereum as those base, base fees get burned and as we track how many how much of those base fees get burned um, I think that's going to be very emotionally impactful in a way that's going to cause some positive price action even before we get to proof of stake and sharding as we as uh, the improvements that we have or the, the progress towards ETH 2.0 takes place. Um, so back over 2600, a good thing. Tomorrow, uh, maybe either before or just after that EIP 1559 hits, and I have that countdown right here, we could see some of that sell off. Um, right around that point in time, maybe a little bit of profit taking. And uh, like I said, as we see the base fees get burned away, and I think as we hit critical levels, we're going to watch how quickly it goes to know what those critical levels are. But as we watch, um, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions to tens of millions of, of ether just get uh, burned away over time. Um, those are going to be things that I think are really going to make people excited about the supply demand uh, side of things that we have for Ethereum. Um, and I just, I think that we, besides all the other reasons that I'm bullish, bullish for Ethereum, just speaking specifically to what we have coming up in the IP 1559, um, I think it's going to uh, be something that acts as a, a catalyst over time 
one that's not going to necessarily be immediately super impactful, but one that's really going to, uh, um, that as, as the numbers grow for the base fees that get burned, um, I think that people's eyes are going to widen over it as to just how much is being burned away and no longer, no longer available in that way. All right. So let me see. Just check with the comments real quick. Uh, Pesker, thanks. Uh, Matthew, thank you. And thank you to, uh, to Bill and Taco and Angelito and uh, everybody else. Michael, um, Simon, uh, uh, Batond. I think I got uh, Faiz. Um, those are uh, those are my thoughts for the day. Thank you for attending. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I hope you have a great Wednesday. I'll be live streaming tomorrow at 9.15. Uh, Friday, I will not be on because I'm playing in a Memorial Golf Tournament, uh, a charitable event. And um, so I will I will be out of the office that day, uh, but I'll be back again for Monday for that live stream. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you have a great day.